The Story of Josiah Gilbert, Part 1. So let's briefly set the scene. Belton, an agricultural village six miles west of Loughborough. In 1861, there were 781 inhabitants, and this remains similar today. Breeden on the Hill, a small village around 11 miles from Loughborough, the population in 1863 was around 650, and today this has risen to just over 1,000. Markfield is just over six miles southwest of Loughborough. In 1086, it comprised two households. In 1863, the village had just begun quarrying local stone and housed around 1,400 inhabitants, while today just over 5,500 people live there. Osgathorpe had eight households in 1086 and is an agricultural village eight miles west of Loughborough. In 1863, there were 351 inhabitants and this increased slightly to just over 400 today. Loughborough in 1086 comprised 39 households. In 1861, the large manufacturing and market town had a population of around 11,000, which has risen to in excess of 60,000 today. In 1916, the country is in the midst of the First World War. William Gilbert had been born in Osgothorpe in 1819 and his wife, Jane Barsby, in Rothley in 1823. They were married at Breeden in 1848. William and Jane's first child, Sarah Ann, was born the following year, and son James in 1850, both born in Osgothorpe. At the time of the 1851 census, William was a blacksmith and the family were living in Osgothorpe. There followed the birth of another two daughters, Mary Jane and Elizabeth, and another son, William. Josiah Gilbert was baptised on the 6th of May 1866 in Osgothorpe, the sixth child of William, listed on the record as a farmer, and Jane. Sadly, Jane died in 1866, and William married Elizabeth Hodgkinson two years later, and the birth of Thomas and Lucy followed. Sadly, Elizabeth appears to have died around 1870. The 1871 census return for Osgothorpe lists the widowed William, a blacksmith and farmer, living with six of his eight children. Sarah Ann, the eldest, had married and was living just down the road, and James was living with his uncle, a grocer and grazier, on Long Street, Belton, where James was the grocer's apprentice. The three older children, Mary, Elizabeth and William, were listed on the census as scholars. At the time of the 1881 census return, the family was living on what was listed as Village Street, Osgothorpe, where daughter Elizabeth was housekeeping for the family, son William was now working as a railway clerk, and the three younger children were scholars. Meanwhile, James had risen to the position of assistant grocer at his uncle's grocery shop in Belton. In 1891, Josiah was listed as living with James and James's family, so wife Harriet and four-month-old daughter Harriet Ethel, on Long Street, Belton, where James was a grocer and baker and Josiah was his older brother's assistant. In 1901, James and Harriet's family had grown to include another daughter, Gladys Elizabeth. Josiah, now aged 35, was still assisting his brother in the grocery and bakery business. The 1901 census was taken on the 31st of March, just three weeks before the first bands of marriage between Josiah Gilbert and Sarah Newbold, both born in Osgothorpe, was read. Following the posting of a further two bands on the 28th of April and the 5th of May, the couple were married. Josiah was aged 35 and Sarah 30. Josiah and Sarah celebrated the birth of their son, William Handley Josiah Gilbert, on the 23rd of February 1902 in Markfield, the birth being registered at Market Bosworth. In 1903, Josiah was listed on the electoral register as the owner of a dwelling house on Main Street, Markfield. This listing continues into subsequent years until 1911, 
and the family appear on the 1911 census return living on Main Street Markfield, where they live and work from the same property. The business is a grocery and bakery store where Sarah assists her husband, while son William is a scholar. In 1912, Josiah appears on the register of electors as he now owns a property, a dwelling house, in Loughborough, number 29 Cumberland Road. His ownership of number 65 Cumberland Road is confirmed by an entry in the local register of electors for 1913. Number 29 Cumberland Road, Loughborough. Number 65 Cumberland Road, Loughborough. On the 16th of January 1913, Josiah Gilbert, baker and grocer, now of number 65 Cumberland Road, makes a will, leaving household furniture and effects, money in the bank, the property on Main Street Markfield, which he held on mortgage, as well as all other properties, wheresoever and whatsoever, in his name, to his wife Sarah. This will was witnessed by neighbours on Cumberland Road, Samuel Ward at number 55, and immediate neighbour Isaac Stedmanese at number 63. So from what we have gathered so far, not only is Josiah a baker and grocer, he also seems to be a property owner, clearly owning more than one house. The 1914 local register of electors reveals that Josiah also now has a property on Empress Road, listed as a dwelling house. This property, number 77, is also a shop, and Josiah is still running the corner grocery shop at the time the 1915 register was taken. A view of the corner shop at number 77, Empress Road. The houses in the area of Empress Road in which the shop was situated had grown up around the extensive Herbert Morris factory, previously known as Herbert Morris and Bastert, and which had moved to Loughborough from Sheffield in 1897. Between 1890 and 1930, the number of employees rose from 50 to around 2,000, making Herbert Morris one of Loughborough's biggest employers. It is reasonable to suppose that, that any local corner shop sited opposite such a large factory with so many workers likely to visit would ensure a thriving business and make a good living for its proprietor. Part of the Herbert Morris factory on Empress Road. However, the new year of 1916 proved catastrophic for the Gilbert family, as indeed it did for many other families and individuals in Loughborough. At around 8pm on the night of January the 31st, 1916, a low rumble could be heard in the distance, which became louder and louder until it reached its height over the town of Loughborough. Although there had been some degree of warning, and the local police had sent word around that all lights were to be extinguished, Zeppelin L-20, which was ultimately heading for Liverpool, found its first target of Sheffield, or so the captain thought. Zeppelins are notoriously difficult to navigate, and given the weather conditions and a troublesome engine, L-20 had actually only reached Loughborough, having been completely unaware of the larger town of Leicester, whose lights had been extinguished. Attracted by lights that were still shining in Loughborough, L-20 dropped its first bomb close to the Technical Institute, which actually fell in the yard of the nearby Crown and Cushing pub causing the death of Mrs. Martha Shipman. The second bomb fell on the rushes, causing complete havoc, and the death of William Adcock, Joe and Alice Adkin, and Ethel Higgs. Making its way from the centre of the town towards the canal, and attracted by the bright lights shining through the glass roof of a factory that had only recently benefited from electric lighting, the next bomb dropped, landed in an orchard on Thomas Street, thankfully killing no one. The final bomb, dropped by Zeppelin L-20, fell closer to the factory and shrapnel flew into a nearby shop, killing, amongst others, the proprietor. Leaving Loughborough townsfolk shocked and scared and considering its job of bombing Sheffield done, the airship departed, heading to Liverpool. However, it actually bombed Burton-on-Trent next. 
In Loughborough, the Herbert Morris factory on Empress Road, lying close to the canal, had been the target of the fourth bomb that dropped, killing Mary Ann Page, her son Joseph and daughter Elsie, and Arthur Christian Turnell. Shrapnel marks at Empress Road. In the attack on Loughborough by Zeppelin L-20, 10 people were killed, 12 people badly injured, and many more suffered minor injuries. The Centenary Memorial on the Rushes. Josiah Gilbert, aged 49, was the shopkeeper who was killed by flying shrapnel on Empress Road, dying in the arms of his 14-year-old son, William. Josiah's distraught family posted a piece in the local newspaper, the Loughborough Echo, in February 1916 thanking all their kind friends for their sympathy. Sarah and son William posted further memorials to Josiah on the anniversary of his death in 1917, 1918 and 1919. Between 1920 and 1923, Sarah was registered as living at number 65 Cumberland Road, Loughborough. Around 1924, Sarah and William moved to number 17 Stora Road, where they both continued to live until Sarah's death in 1942. Number 17 Stora Road, Loughborough. William stayed in the Stora Road property until around 1965, when he went to live at number 1 Beaufort Avenue, Loughborough, where he remained until his death. On the 31st of January 1970, William Hansley Josiah Gilbert died. This was the 54th anniversary of the death of his father, Josiah Gilbert, on the night of the Zeppelin attack on Loughborough.